I was three years old, and my father had a, a tailor shop in Boston where the government center is now. He had a customer who lived around the corner in one of these uh, residential hotels, and this man was a bachelor, and he was the producer of the Yiddish radio hour in Boston. So he uh, came in one day to my father's shop, and he said, I need to have a little girl on my um, radio show. Um, I know you have a little girl, because my mother used to go into the store on Saturday and bring me with her, of course, with her. So he said, I know you have a little girl. Ask your wife to bring her. We're going to have an audition next week, whatever day. Ask your wife to bring your little girl in. And they tell me there were about 100 little girls there. And I recited Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And they picked me to be the little girl for the radio show. Now, I never liked it. I never liked performing at all. But I did it because, well, I was expected to do it. And, you know, it was just a way of life. And at the age of three, I was able to read my scripts. I was just evidently beginning to learn to read. And my mother, I, could, I remember, was teaching me to read at that time. But I do remember reading the scripts. For four years, I was on the radio show. Now, they went to, they had this one radio show at 11 o'clock in the morning, Sunday. Then they, they enlarged it to two radio shows. And the second one was uh, at 1 o'clock. So one of them was W-E-E-I at the Hotel Terrain in Boston. And the other one, I don't remember the hotel, but it was oh, one was W-H-D-H and one was W-E-E-I. I can't remember which was which. Radio, the timing has to be exact. And you have Q, you go on Q, and it has to come out exactly at the right time. Now, when I think, I didn't think about it then, but as I think about it now, three years old, and when he would go like the producer, he'd go like that, that was my Q, and I had to deliver right at that moment. So um, they put me on a box, I was very little, and they put me on a box, and in those days they had the round microphone, uh, and... Um, that's how I reached the microphone. They didn't play records. Everything was live, live orchestra. They had a three-piece orchestra, and they had the soprano, and they had this one. There were about 10 people at the rehearsals, which were held in the producer's apartment, this residential hotel. And so um, he, I remember saying something. I was supposed to be doing something with the script. And he said to me, that's very good, sweetheart, but say it a little faster. Um, and I remember saying, I'm three years old, remember, my mother said, no matter what Mr. Fisher says, you say it slow. This is in front of all these people. <laughs> my poor mother, <laughs> she must have been terribly embarrassed. I don't really remember my scripts at all, but I do remember advertising various things. So my theme song was, looky, 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 here comes Cookie, walking down the street. And that's when, uh, that was my cue to advertise. So then I became Dolly Diamond, and I advertised Diamond Cream Cheese when I was Dolly Diamond. The original advertisement for Dolly Diamond, this is 1929. Then the other thing I advertised was... I used to sign off one of the radio shows, and that was, and it was called the Morrison and Schiff Radio Hour. They're no longer in business, but did you ever hear Morrison and Schiff? That is, uh, well, the theme song for that was, uh, says Morrison and Schiff, kosher salami, and something corned beef, and, and echid pastrami, says Morrison and Schiff, says Morrison and Schiff. And that's how that radio hour ended every Sunday, because I signed it off by, by singing about Morrison and Schiff.